I'm Donald Hilton. I'm a neurosurgeon and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about pornography and pornography addiction and how that affects the brain. Now, First of all, let's talk about how the brain functions. Let's pretend the brain is a car. Where's the brake? The brake is right here behind just over the eyes. We call that the frontal lobe. So it's the part of the brain that says don't do it, think about it, if you do it there's going to be consequences. When that part of the brain is hurt, either from an aneurysm or a car wreck or anything that damages this frontal lobe, this break of the brain, then the person loses or is damaged in their ability to stop, to say, maybe I better not do that. If I do, there will be consequences. So let's talk about addiction and how that relates then to the frontal lobe. In a car, when we see a danger as we're driving, we use those brakes and those brakes allow us to stop. Let's say we're walking on the side of the road and we see an ice cream stand on the other side and we say, I really, it's hot, I really want some ice cream. Before we cross the road though, we see a big cement truck coming and our frontal lobe, among other parts of our brain says, think about that. You can eat the ice cream but it probably would be better to wait till the truck goes by before you cross the street. In addiction, we don't wait to go get the ice cream. We walk right in front of the cement truck. So what can we become addicted to? Well, we know that certain things are addictive. You probably won't have any trouble believing that cocaine and methamphetamine and other drugs are addictive, which means as we take them, our brain becomes dependent on them to the point where we can't quit. We lose our ability to stop. You would probably not be surprised to know that this frontal lobe actually changes size and its ability to function with addiction. A couple of scientific studies have shown that with both cocaine and methamphetamine addiction, this frontal lobe, this break of the brain actually shrinks. It gets smaller with the addiction. In fact, years ago there was a commercial about drugs. A man would stand there with an egg and say, this is your brain. Then he would go and drop the egg in a frying pan full of oil. <clears throat> the egg would sizzle and shrink. And he would say, this is your brain on drugs. We remember, some of us remember that commercial. <clears throat> it's more true than not in the sense that the frontal lobes actually do get smaller when the person becomes addicted. So they become smaller and less able to function properly. In other words, the person doesn't say stop as well. Even though there may be dangers with an activity or behavior, they don't see it and they don't stop. So even though cocaine and methamphetamine use is damaging, destroying their lives, they don't stop. Well, is pornography or sexual addiction, can that be a real addiction like cocaine and methamphetamine? The answer science is telling us is yes it can. Can it change the brain in similar ways? Can it cause these frontal lobe areas, this break of the brain, to actually get smaller? Actually it can. A couple of recent studies have shown this. One looked at overeating leading to obesity and found that the frontal areas of the brain shrunk just like they did with cocaine and methamphetamine. And then, I believe it was 2007, recently, a study looking at a form of sexual addiction showed the same thing, that those frontal lobes actually got smaller in addiction, in sexual addiction. Think about that for a minute. We have four different studies, two drug studies, cocaine and methamphetamine, and two natural addiction studies, overeating leading to obesity and sexual addiction. These are four different studies done in four different scientific institutions and published in four different scientific journals, all showing the same thing, that this frontal area, this break of the brain actually shrinks or gets smaller with addiction, whether to a chemical or a behavior. This is important because as a neurosurgeon we know that the brain is dam when the brain is damaged, again by trauma such as a car wreck or by a tumor, the person is not able to process or to stop. They become, and I'll use 
several words that I'll define. Compulsive, which means they focus on something and they say, I have to have that one. Not that one, but that one. That's called compulsivity. Second, impulsivity. Impulsivity means they pick something out almost arbitrarily and have to have it. And then they change immediately. I have to have that one. And they just change their mind quickly and they're very impulsive about their decisions without really weighing it. <clears throat> Which brings us to the third thing that addiction or frontal lobe damage does, and that is impaired judgment. They don't weigh it out. They can't see the consequences. They don't see down the street. They don't see around the corner with what's going to happen later. And of course, the fourth thing is emotional ability. They get happy, sad, angry, and change their emotions quickly. So we know now that pornography addiction is a, a powerful natural addiction, as are other sexual addictions, and that these natural addictions can change the brain in very powerful ways. Another way it changes the brain, in addition to these frontal lobe changes we've talked about, is the dopamine system. Now, dopamine is a brain chemical, and dopamine causes us to desire or to value pleasure. It's important we have dopamine or we wouldn't even want to eat. It tells us, it rewards us for participating in behaviors that help us survive, like eating and like procreation. That's why sexuality is pleasant. Unfortunately, when a person overuses the behavior that produces the dopamine, then that becomes the main event instead of the garnish. And addiction ensues and happens. Can our brain make drugs? I was on a safari in Africa several years ago. We were in open air Land Rovers with no doors and no windows. Now, when you're driving along in an open-air Land Rover with no doors and no windows, you can get kind of nervous when you see a lion up close. The rule is the lion will generally look at the Land Rover as a big, smelly, oily animal that's not very good to eat. That usually is the case. Fortunately with us, when we saw animals, it was when we went on our safari. Well, we were driving one day and our ranger said, I think we're going to go to the adrenaline grass today see if we can find some animals there. I said, what's adrenaline grass? He went, I'll show you. So as we drove over, we went over by the river, the Zambezi River, and there was this high grass, six to eight feet high. He was driving around this grass, and all of a sudden he said, do you see it? I said, see what? There. And so sure enough, there was a lion hiding in the adrenaline grass, just hiding under crouching, just looking, just looking at the river, just waiting for some fast food to walk by. It looked at us too. And we all got the impression, are we the fast food? But fortunately, the lion obeyed the rule and he said, mm, smelly, Land Rover, oily, nah, it's not good to eat. And he left us alone. But let me tell you, when that lion looked at us at first, my heart thumped. Why? Why did it thump? Because my brain made a chemical. It made a drug called adrenaline. It's a drug that as doctors, we give people sometimes to make their hearts beat. But I didn't need a doctor to give it to me. My heart was thumping without it. When I saw the lion, my brain made the adrenaline. Now what about dopamine, that pleasure chemical? Well, it's also important in movement. And in people with Parkinson's disease, which is a disease where people can't move very well, we as doctors give people dopamine and they take it. And as they do, they can move better. So let's think about that. Are adrenaline and dopamine drugs only if we go to a pharmacy and buy them with a prescription, you know, with the doctor's permission, we buy them, and then we take them into our body to treat problems and diseases. Are they a drug if we do that? But they're not a drug if our brain makes them and they do the same thing. Of course not. They're drugs either way. Well, pornography is really good at causing our brain to make both adrenaline, dopamine, and other chemicals and drugs. And these drugs can cause our brains to change in the same ways that drugs that we bring in from outside our bodies can cause our brains to change. And these can be, these can be ways that damage us and hurt us. So I think that's the important thing to understand is that these are really brain drugs, these behaviors. Pornography is a drug in that sense. It's 
the internet has made pornography the crack cocaine of addictions, of visual addictions. What to do? Is it harmful? Absolutely, it's harmful. Some will say, well, it's only bad because of, say, religious or values or beliefs. That's not true. Social science research shows that pornography clearly harms a person no matter what their religious perspective or non-perspective is. It harms relationships. It harms the ability to form emotion, to think, to feel. Numerous studies have shown this, but still people in denial can, can act out in pornography thinking that it won't hurt them. It will, 100% of the time, and it's progressive. What is initially just interesting that a person may look at out of curiosity will with time become a very powerful compulsion. So what about healing? What happens if a person has seen pornography a few times and they feel compelled to go back, curious, or if they've seen it a lot and are already involved in actively seeking it out on a regular basis and even stimulating themselves sexual, sexually through masturbation with pornography. That welds it in deeper. That causes the brain to really lock in. Well, the key is to seek help. Go to a parent. Go to a trusted adult leader and seek help. Because of the nature of this problem, if we don't seek help, if we have this problem, it will not go away. It won't leave. It will fester. It will increase. Like a fish that has swallowed a hook, it will only bury itself deeper the more the fish thrashes and tries to get rid of the hook. Without help and healing and support from outside sources, there's no way to extract that hook. And remember, the hook has several prongs. It has that frontal area where we, those who are afflicted with pornography don't think as well. The break of the brain doesn't work as well. They also have changes in that pleasure center where they need more dopamine to feel good again. And also there are powerful brain chemicals that cause us to love, to bond emotionally. And those chemicals are probably important in causing us to have a feeling of bonding to an object, to an experience, rather than a person. It confuses our brain physiologically and neurologically. Seek help. Reach out. There is hope and there is healing with support, but not alone. Thank you.